Hey guys, it is still late night, and for some reason I just can't stop thinking of just wanting to vlog. It's really all I want to do right now. I don't really know why. I seem to often get this urge late at night just to kind of get on here, talk, jabber on about random crap. Maybe that's what most of this channel should be, just me doing late night stuff, hanging out, doing nothing else but that, often talking about movies and music, sometimes even books, sometimes even deep stuff, really deep stuff, personal stuff, you guys don't want to hear about. But it's my channel. And the 17 of you that are viewing are just gonna have to deal with it. I realize that the yell doesn't really work that well. Mostly just because I'm also half whispering. That might be something else you have to get used to on this channel. I don't know. Anyway... So, I've got all these Chuck Norris movies spread out before me, right? This is going to be more randomness, just like the last video was. Probably no longer in length. But, I've got all these Chuck Norris movies just spread out in front of me. And for some reason, I just feel like talking about my love for Chuck Norris. Not, it's not a deep love for a man like another man can sometimes have, where it's a best friend, or it's someone that you admire deeply and know personally. It's not quite that, but it's the kind of distant admiration that you can have for somebody that you realize is someone who's cool. It's a list of several things. It's several things. It's Somebody who's cool, somebody who's functional and ha and lives a good life, and someone also who exemplifies a number of your values, would agree with you on a number of subjects, but also disagree with you on one, uh, on some, and also the type of person that you can look up to as a model for change. And there's there's a certain thing to be said of hero worship, you know, there's certain good stuff and certain bad things. I think mostly hero worship, frankly, is bad, unless it's uh, some t sort of transcendent being, which, despite the funny jokes, Chuck Norris is not. But also, it has a degree of, you know, this guy's cool, I want to be like this guy in some respects of my life. One of the respects of my life that I find Chuck Norris compelling in is his fitness. Uh, and he talks a lot about fitness. And when you look at his movies, the only reason he's able to do any of this stuff is through fitness. I'd love to be as fit as Chuck Norris is. Although I do realize that because of my body type... I'm never going to be there, 100%. Um, right now, I weigh 223-ish pounds. I'm 5'6 or 7, somewhere between that. 5'6 um, or 5'7, somewhere between those two. And that's not a good weight for me. I don't look it. But it's not a good weight for me. Um, I'm never going to be quite on that level. But but I have somebody to look up to. And that's Chuck Norris. And I'd like to eventually even get involved somewhat in martial arts. I know, looking at a guy like me, probably not the martial arts looking guy. But, you know, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Regardless of that, Chuck Norris is an interesting figure to me just because... You know, he puts forward everything he's got. 
despite the fact that he's not a good actor, he's still made tons of money in acting. Um, mostly due to his really good fight skills and a certain charisma that he has. Not, not a deep charisma, because his on-screen persona is not something deep, but there's, there's a certain roughness and also a certain ca amount of caring that comes from a Chuck Norris performance. The one that I'm watching right now, which I mentioned in the other, in the other video, is um, A Force of One. And A Force of One has a performance by Chuck that's very warm, very endearing, until he gets to the end when he has to be absolutely cruel. And you can kind of see the storm just brewing barely beneath. It's an interesting kind of thing. Some of his work can be subtle and can be sometimes good, but oftentimes, you know, it's not great acting, but it's great martial arts and it's great fun because the plots of his movies are often so crazy. Um, I also just respect the guy for staying true to the independent spirit. The guy never really sold out as far as I'm concerned. You know, he starts out with Bruce Lee. His first movie is actually a movie called The Man with a Go the Golden Arm, I think, which is a Dean Martin movie. Nobody knows about that one. I've never seen it in my life either. It's like $70 on Amazon, some something close to that. Probably never going to watch it. Um, if I get the chance, I will, but right now I think I'll probably never watch it. But his first really big thing was, you know, as Bruce Lee's nemesis in Return of the Dragon, which I have right here, a really cool Blu-ray of by Shout Factory's Shout Select's label. label. Uh, Shout Select, I mean. Really cool fight scene with him in there. Just down and dirty, crazy really good skills that will never be forgotten. Great, great battle. So he starts out there, which is somewhat independent, but also kind of big. And then he moves into these really small things. And the first real starring thing that he was in is a movie, I mentioned this earlier, Breaker Breaker, which is a really crazy, tr like, trucker movie. Nobody, again, has it, like, ever heard of. And then he goes into this studio called American Films, I think they're called, and makes these three movies. Starts making a ton of money. Uh, starts, you know, really making himself a little bit of a name. He's not really a name, but he's making a ton of money. Um, and then he moves on, and he goes into 1981, and he does An Eye for an Eye, which I haven't seen. I've seen a little bit of it. Uh, it's him versus Christopher Lee, which I think is kind of cool, but, you know, you got that going on. Then he goes into a movie that I have right here called uh, Forced Vengeance, which, you know, this was mentioned in the Sausage Factory's retrospective on Chuck Norris, where they're talking about uh, Chuck Norris movies and Cole over at Jet Silver, Jet Silver Avenger, a.k.a. Cold Talks Comics. Plug in your channel, buddy. Um, forced Vengeance uh, kind of has a funny implication. He didn't want to take vengeance, but they forced his hand into taking vengeance. So, it's kind of funny. But there's that, and then he moves on and does probably the most well-known... Well, maybe not the most well-known, but probably the best movie that he's ever been in as a star, which is Lone Wolf McQuaid. And then he moves in after that to starting to do these... Okay, so let, let's backtrack a little bit. So he does Lone Wolf McQuaid. And then after Lone Mo Wolf McQuaid, like, this, this is a really sort of star-making vehicle for him. Like, this is a big movie. It's got like it's it's got big cinematography, big soundtrack, uh soundtrack meaning specifically the score. It makes him into sort of a legendary type of character. And he could go two ways. 
he could go and turn this into something that he's going to make with a big studio. He's going get to get into these big studio films. Or, or, he can go with two Jews from Israel and start making crazy action movies. And that's what he chose to do. I'm not, by the way, when I say Jews, I don't say anything negative about the Jews. Huge respect for them. Big supporter of Israel. But anyway, Missing in Action and Missing in Action 2, filmed back to back, 1984 and 1985. Actually, the beginning, the second one was filmed before, but they thought the, um, the first one, Missing in Action, was better. Uh, so they released it first and then released Missing in Action 2, the beginning, as a sequel the next year. I disagree. I like Missing in Action 2 better. But having said that, he starts, instead of going down the route of studio films, he goes into sort of an independent studio and makes all these low-budget, crazy action movies with weird plots, kind of all culminating in, in him making the movie... Also on this Blu-ray uh, trilogy here, uh, the Delta Force. He makes the Delta Force, which is probably one of the more recognizable names of his movies. And actually directed by Menachem Golan, um, one of the guys from Canon, like the one of the principal actors from Canon. Um, actors, I mean producers. Uh, actors, as in he acts on things, not an actual actor, but the Delta Force. It all culminates in the Delta Force. And, you know, his star just sort of starts to fade from there, and and then he kind of reinvents himself and goes back to that Lone Wolf McQuaid kind of persona, but more clean-cut than McQuaid. He, 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 gets, he gets to be um, um, Walker, Texas Ranger, reinventing himself, and he's that for pretty much the entirety of the 90s with, you know, a few interspliced, you know, children's movies put in there as well. Uh, one of my favorites being Forest Warrior, which is a crazy, crazy movie, but so bad it's good, and he's actually legitimately good in it. Um, it's got some really fun stuff going on in there, but yeah, and he, he never really sold out. I mean, he was part of the Expendables, but he was in there for all of probably like five or six minutes. I don't know. I just, I like it. I like that idea, that independent spirit, and that's what I've mostly, I guess, based my opinion of him on. Um, because he's so talented as far as an athlete, and he's still so talented, even at like 75, I think, is his age. But you know, he's he's still going. He's still doing stuff. He's going strong. He's he's rocking and rolling and doing it hard and hitting things hard. So I think that's really cool. Anyway, well, this has be, been me gushing about Chuck Norris. It's late night. This is late night vlog number two. Random stuff where I talk about Chuck Norris, I guess. So talk to you later. Rock on. If you like to subscribe, talk to you later. Bye.